you know what? I, I have these are the moments on this show that I have to breathe in and be present in this moment because I cannot believe this is about to happen. Our next guest, Leslie Uggams, is a beloved actress and singer who has spent seven decades dazzling us on stage and screen from her Tony Award winning role in the Broadway musical Hallelujah Baby to her unforgettable Emmy nominated portrayal of Kizzy Reynolds in the groundbreaking TV miniseries Roots. And she was the first black woman to ever host her own variety show on television. In recent years, Leslie has gained a whole new generation of fans thanks to her role as Blind Al in Marvel's Deadpool movies. And right now, in this moment, at this time, she is enjoying yet another career triumphant moment for her performance in American Fiction, which has been nominated for five Oscars, including Best Picture. In the film, Leslie stars as Jeffrey Wright's character's mother, the matriarch at the center of a family who is struggling with early stage Alzheimer's. It is an unforgettable performance. Take a look. Welcome. Oh, the perfect timing. This is Coraline. Hello, dear. I'm Agnes. Such a pleasure to meet you. I brought you these. Joe, oh, you're so my favorite. There's a whole world inside them. Wow. <laughs> Tam Fam, in a daytime exclusive, her first visit to our show. It is my great honor to present to this audience Miss Leslie Aga. <laughs> Your skin is radiating. <laughs> you, uh, uh, my, uh, my breath is taken away. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, the last time we were together, I interviewed you on my show in 2016. Yeah. The remake of Roots. Yep. Um, prior to that, I ran into you at a Broadway inspirational voice. Well, by ran into, I was stalking her. <laughs> You walked into the church with a performance, and I remember everyone said, there's Leslie Uggams. And I was like, wait a minute, there's Leslie Uggams. And I, it was, so, I get goosebumps now. Aww. Because you, you are now 80? Yes. <laughs> um, I, I don't know a time that I did not point to you as a guiding light. Oh. This is the first time ever you are part of an Oscar-nominated cast. Hello. I mean... That's something. That is something, because we, you've won your Tony and your Emmy, and those are huge. Yeah. But now you are on an Oscar-nominated film. It's amazing. It's amazing. How, put yeah. that in perspective. At this time in your life, put that in perspective for us. Well, first of all, um, the script, yeah. when it was sent to me, I said, oh, my gosh, <laughs> this is too good to be true. Right. It was written so well, and all the characters were fleshed out so well. And I said, oh, I'm interested in that. And then they said, Jeffrey Wright. And I said, what time do we start? <laughs> And apparently, he felt the same way. I saw an interview where he said he had a crush on you <laughs> growing up. But by the way, who did it? But I mean, look at him making those googly eyes at you in his picture. The funniest thing, he didn't tell me this uh -huh. after we did the movie, thank <laughs> God. I'm playing his mother, right. you know. <laughs> stuff like that. But, but I mean, I can't stop look, look, he's yeah. looking at you. <laughs> we see you, Jeffrey Wright. We see you. Um, but this character is so beautiful, and she is, I think, for so many people, 
She reminds us of someone in our family, no matter your race. Yes. The conversation of Alzheimer's, and it is the current conversation in every family, and here she is beautifully portrayed by you. Well, you know, the whole thing, too, is that who's going to step up to the plate to take care of an aging parent? Yeah. You know, and there's always someone in the family that does. Yeah. And a lot of times, it, it's not who you expect it to be. Right. One of our highest rated shows, we were five seasons, was a show on caregiving, caregivers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said, you're going to either be the caregiver or someone's going to have to care for you. Yes. Yes. And that's the conversation. I was just, you know, coming in here in the studio, and when I thought about this line of, you were the first black woman to ever host a variety television mm -hmm. show in this country. Um, I mean, when you, when you look at it and still now breaking ground in this career, is it, is it what you dreamt? I mean, the little kid who wanted to do this. The little kid who was a ham. Right. <laughs> I was not shy. And if you said, would you like to, before you got to sing, I was singing, uh -huh. you know? So I, I always... It was something that was natural for me to do. But it might be natural, but you don't know it's obtainable. And on the well, 60 Minutes interview, you said, I don't take no for an answer, so it hasn't been a burden on me, this, this interesting trajectory of this life. So yes. you, don't, you have the talent, you don't take no for an answer, but society isn't always ready. I mean, I was the first black woman to do the Today Show in 62 years. Yeah, yeah. And that's, those are weird yeah. things to think about. You were there as an example, but... You didn't have that lead. No, it was not a, an easy time. And when I did my own show, um, I replaced the Smothers Brothers. Wow. And that was a... <laughs> yeah. And that was a big scandal because they, they were very political. They had gotten involved in politics. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the network didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of the blue, which most of my career has been out of the blue. It's, it's never been planned. Yeah. They said, uh, you're going to have a television show. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, yes, you're taking over this for the Smothers Brothers. And I said, oh, OK, this is fantastic. And you rose to the occasion. I love that you said so much has happened out of the blue, because I need to get the backstory when we come back on how Miss Leslie Uggams ended up with an iconic character in Deadpool. <laughs> and now we're talking about Deadpool 3, <laughs> a whole new generation falling in love with the great Leslie Uggams. More after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. Still with us, we are so lucky to have Hollywood legend Leslie Uggams, who is starring in the five-time Oscar-nominated movie American Fiction, and who later this summer will be reprising her role and the highly anticipated third Deadpool movie, Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> All right, so I want to touch on the Oscars again because I'm sitting here looking at just a few of these beautiful images and I said, what are you going to wear to the Oscars? And you said, tell the audience. Well, I'm working. I'm doing uh, Jelly's Last Jam <laughs> at City Center. Yeah. And by the time we finish, I have to get ready because I'm going to be at 54 Below for three days doing my act. So I don't even know if I have, can get out there. Wait, so she's so booked and busy <laughs> at the beautiful age of 80, you may not make it to the Oscars? Hello. <laughs> but I love in the break you said, um, things happen out of the blue. Yes. I have to tell you, I, there I am, getting ready to watch Deadpool, like everybody else went to the movie theaters, and your character, Blind Al, pops up, and I know, I know it's a character, but she cursed and she's got a gun and she's a, I mean, a gun packing foul mouth granny. I'm talking gangster granny. When you read the, how did this happen? It is so wild. <laughs> they sent me a script that made no sense <laughs> whatsoever. And so I said, okay. And I just kind of did the thing. And I thought, what is this? Right. 
And then, was there cursing in the audition script that they sent you? No, not. A they, oh, they. Not, not the first one. So they send you a script with no cursing because all she does is curse in the whole movie. <laughs> well, when I was able to do the second time, there still wasn't anything. And then they, they liked me and they said, we think you have the part, but we want to now, you know, meet with the director. And I'm talking with the director, and he happened to ask me a question, and the F word came out of my mouth. <laughs> so, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> and he turned to me and said, I love the way you said that. And I got the role. Wait. Because you delivered the F word in conversation. And so Ryan, they say he, he ad, Ryan Reynolds ad libs a lot of, yes. the, of the script. Yes. So there you are. You ad libbing a lot of those curse words now that I know you curse in real life, which I never would have guessed. <laughs> I never, if I would have lost that on Jeopardy. <laughs> he, he always comes up to me and he'll say, Leslie, do you mind saying such and such and such? And I go, let's go for it. <laughs> A part of, you know, we just got done celebrating Love Week and all that, yes. and you have been married to Graham, Graham. for... 58 you? years. 58 <laughs> years? You were 22 when you met. Like, that's, a, that's a, an amazing... I think People Magazine, it's an amazing love story. 22 years old when you met? 22 years old. We got married when I was 22 years old. I met him in Australia, and um, we fell in love. And this... Then the second year I went back, um, he proposed, and we got married. <laughs> <laughs> With my marriage, we were friends before we were lovers. Oh. And I think that's very important because we liked each right. other before we fell in love because, you know, after a while you get to a certain age, you know, all that other stuff that you were doing hanging from the ceiling and all that stuff. <laughs> You've been hanging out with those guys on Deadpool <laughs> way too long. <laughs> and I just thought you were going to say, use eye cream every night. <laughs> now I'm getting bedroom secrets from Leslie Helga. <laughs> Things you never know. Uh, but it is, it's just, you just love life and you can tell. And yes. we love you. And I'm so happy that this moment is oh. happening. We got to figure out this Oscar situation. Okay. <laughs>